Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's devotion taken from Psalm 127, which is a psalm that speaks to us about work. And I don't know about you, but I think that work is one of the more tricky things uh, we have to gauge as Christians. It's something that dominates most of our days, uh, something that can actually dominate our whole life. Uh, but it's hard to do so in a way that we know is godly. And I think the psalmist really struggled with that. How often do we labor and we discover at the end of the day that it was all in vain? Sometimes we do that, uh, we have a bad day, so a teacher just can't get a concept through to his or her students. And sometimes a doctor loses a patient. Sometimes an engineer has an accident. Um, and those things can be really difficult. But even more difficult is when our whole working life turns out to be in vain. And sometimes you don't see that until it's too late. And so I've known uh, people not to know what to say at a funeral service because all their father or their uncle did was work and they never knew him other than that. And they never had a relationship with him because of it. Uh, he might have earned some money, but actually... His work was all in vain. How often does our work become a toil? It was never meant to be that, but because of Adam in the Garden of Eden, work's been cursed and it can often be a toil and we never really achieve something without it being a struggle. And so it's easy to get work wrong, to work too hard, to become a workaholic, to strive to achieve uh, who knows what in the end, because we just strive and we strive and we strive and nothing seems to be ever enough. <clears throat> we can also be lazy. There are some people who don't work hard enough. And uh, the Apostle Paul spoke about those people in 2, Cor uh, 2 Thessalonians. They had stopped working because they thought Jesus was coming soon. And uh, they were waiting and waiting and they were getting hungry. And they were starting to depend upon other Christian people who weren't quite as foolish as them, but were still working, longing for God's return. And Paul said to them, if you won't work, you don't deserve to eat. And, uh, and so we need to be careful that we don't fall into the other trap of being lazy and becoming dependent on others when we really should be just working harder ourselves. There's a difficult balance to be played in that, but work is a difficult thing. So what does Psalm 127 say about how we can work so that it is work that is pleasing to the Lord and builds us up? Well, firstly, I think he says, work with the Lord. Unless the Lord builds the house, the laborers labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards watching will be pointless. And so we need to work with the Lord, whatever we do. We need to do it in such a way that we would be happy to do it if Jesus was standing next to us. Uh, we need to be working in such a way that fulfills the creation mandate, that um, fills the earth and takes dominion over it, where we add value, where we build into people's lives, where we create things that wouldn't otherwise be there. That's the kind of work that we need to be doing, work that we can do with the Lord. Secondly, the psalm speaks about working for our children, seeing our children as being the great benefit and the great blessing of life. Uh, he longs for a whole quiver full of children. Sometimes we're a bit scared of that. That sounds like way too many. Uh, but nonetheless, there is great blessing to be had in family, isn't there? And so it is right and proper to work for the purposes of looking after and providing for our family. But be careful that you don't work so that you never get to see your family that you're supposedly providing for. We need to get that balance right, don't we? We're responsible to looking after our family. But the real blessing is being with our family and building relationships with them. Thirdly, we need to work for God's family. Not all of us have our own family. Some of us haven't been blessed that way. But in Christ, we have all become part of the family of God. He has made us the sons and children, sons and daughters of God. We are his children. And so we get to work for his kingdom and his purposes 
And so don't forget to do a little bit of work for the church as well. Because maybe, just maybe, your greatest work is not the millions you're earning in your factory. It's not uh, the work that you do seven days or five days a week, but maybe it's the work you do teaching that Sunday school class, or the work you do leading the congregation to worship, or the work you do helping us to balance our budgets and serving us in the leadership, whatever way it is. Make sure you work for the Lord too, because you know that when you're working for the Lord, your work could never be in vain. That's what the psalmist speaks about. It's not easy. We need much wisdom in these matters, but may God give it to you as you think about it today. See you tomorrow.